YouTube, what it do, my fam, welcome back. You know what the terms call me? Give us a look. You know what I'm saying? I got to slow it down for the new, for the new family. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can start catching on when I start speeding it up. You feel me? But today we got the movie Starry Eyes. Now Starry Eyes, this movie expo exposes everything from from beginning to end. You see what I'm saying? Exposes um, the blood sacrifices, the rituals, and the casting couch. Right. So this finna be a good one. It's finna be a long one. So y'all go ahead, get y'all. Get y'all popcorn, get y'all dinner. You feel me? Sit down, turn the TV on. You feel me? Don't even watch it on your phone. Turn your TV on. You feel me? And just chill and just and just watch this because this finna be a good one. So without further ado, we finna tap right in. We finna see what's going on. So the first thing I want to point out about this movie is the cover, right? So we have the movie Starry Odds. It's the movie called Starry Odds. And right here we can see that the star is upside down and not upside right side up <laughs> now we know we already know what this means uh when it starts upside down this is the baphomet uh pentagram right here right so they they know these things and they're showing you in plain sight this is what this means uh and then you see these people in the background uh with the hoods on all black with the hoods on just like eyes wash it just like so many other so many other projects, so many other artworks, so many other bodies of work. Uh, we've seen these people with these hoods on. So you already know who they are. They're, doing, they're partaking in some type of ritual, right? So this movie is about this girl named uh, Sarah, Sarah Walker. Uh, she wants to be a, a movie star in Hollywood. That's what she wants to do. So um, we start off the movie and she's in the mirror and she's looking at her body you know this this kind of touches on like the insecurities uh, of the people in hollywood right nothing's really wrong with her body right but to her you know she looks fat right just something simple but you know something something that has to be touched on um and she works at this uh restaurant it's called big taters so that's where she worked trying to kind of like to give her give you like a backstory on you know she wasn't really you know she was she was struggling you see what i'm saying she was struggling she was a struggling actress trying to make it big right so now so now you kind of see uh where we finna go with this right so continue uh she's going to different um auditions uh she's really not doing too well right she has this little thing where uh when she gets frustrated uh she pulls out her hair that's that's like how she copes with like a stressful situation uh so that's what happened when she went through this audition she didn't really do too well and she went in the bathroom and she pulled out her hair now the reason why i'm bringing these things up is it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna come back up later on in in this film Nostalgia. right so she's in the house she's in oh no uh she's in the apartment uh she lives with her other friends that are also uh aspiring uh, actors, actresses, writers, directors, you know, things of that nature. So she lived with about five or six other people in the in the apartment. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so she's in the kitchen uh, looking up uh, different. Uh, uh, what do you call them, man? Different, different uh, casting, different casting calls, different casting. She, she, she's looking up different projects to audition for right so this project right here is called the silver screen right and you know she's going to this party now these are her roommates right here that you're looking at and this girl that's smiling uh smiling in her face this the fakest bitch in the whole movie right this this the girl that's smiling in your face you feel me but really she hating on what you got going on you see what i'm saying and that's who she was right there this her best friend this her best friend she the most supportive girl most supportive person in this whole movie see what i'm saying but these are her roommates some of them not all of them uh, this is her other roommate he's a expiring he's an aspiring writer right he wants to be a famous writer in hollywood so all of these people uh in this movie all these uh characters uh they want to be they want to make it big in hollywood that's they that's their theme right so um Oh, so so now she gets her first casting call for the silver screen. So she goes to the audition. 
and we got this fake ass wannabe Zach Efron. And then we got this other lady that looked like uh, Droopy. You feel me? She looked like Droopy. Uh, but these are the the, ca the casting, uh, I guess you call them casting directors. I guess that's who they are. Correct me if I'm wrong. But she's in the audition and she's trying to impress these people so she can get this role. This is a lead role for, for a major film. You see what I'm saying? So if she get this role, this is going to be her big shot in Hollywood. You see what I'm saying? I got to paint the picture so y'all can see it. You feel me? So moving on. So we got Zac Efron and Droopy. You feel me? They giving her the, the, the little lines that she's supposed to say. And uh, like I said again, man, she 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 do her lines, but it's like it's like a little more that they looking for. You know, she not really giving them that it factor. She not giving them that 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 oomph that they need. You see what I'm saying? That they looking for. So, you know, they give her the we'll call you. You know what I'm saying? You ever went on a you ever went on a job interview, you know what I'm saying? They be like, we'll call you. You know they not finna call you. You see what I'm saying? So she get upset because she already know what time it is, you feel me, when they say we'll call you. So she go to the bathroom and once again, she starts pulling out her hair. Right? Now, now Droopy, Droopy come, she go in the bathroom because she hear the girl screaming and she's screaming and pulling out her hair and things like that. So Droopy come in the bathroom and she's impressed by this. She's impressed by this. So so now she sees that she got potential because she she put so much energy into that. You feel me? So she was like, she was intrigued by that. So she said, you know what? Come back in this room. You know what I'm saying? So she so she gets another chance. She gets another chance. And they want to see her kind of like cause harm to herself. So so they call her back in the room. And like, do that again. Do, do what you did in that bathroom. And, and she wasn't really doing it. You know what I'm saying? She was doing it, but she wasn't really feeling it because she wasn't angry anymore so it wasn't like that same energy wasn't put into it so they really weren't paying no attention like oh this bitch bullshitting again you feel me so this bitch like it, it finally clicked for her. like look this is my shot this is this is it right here this is what i've been waiting for so she goddamn did what she had to do so she started pulling out her hair started screaming the girl started getting impressed she started looking up they, they 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 like oh you know what i'm saying like they 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 see she got some at this point so she all on the ground rolling around pulling out her hair and things like that and it almost felt like it almost felt like something was taking over her body because as she was on the ground she like it, it was almost like she noticed herself like doing that and she quickly got up and panicked as if that wasn't her doing that uh, so at this point, you know, now they like, you could tell the energy was different uh, the way they spoke to her after her audition. You know, they said, you you know, we'll, we'll give you a call. You know, it was a different kind of, we'll give you a call. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't that same little, you know, that job interview, we'll call you. You see you know, that dry, you know, it was some energy behind it. So she knew, she knew she did good, right? So she went back. So she went back home to the apartment, right? Now here's her supportive friend, right? She she wondering, you know what I'm saying? Did it go good? Did it go well? Oh, whole time, whole time. She didn't know. She didn't know that she did good, right? The girl. Now she at work at the big taters, you feel me? And she get a phone call like, um, we need you to come again to the step to, to part two of your audition. You see what I'm saying? So now she happy. You know, she getting her leg in the door. You feel me? Uh, so now she she getting her head like juiced up. You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't even get the role yet. And she already quit her job. Like she spoke to the manager and she told him she quit. And, and if you pay attention right here, once again, we have the star upside down once again to represent the Baphomet pentagram. That was like a little subtle like little subtle little symbolism you know what i'm saying you wouldn't know if you didn't see it but moving on man so she come back to the interview or the, or the audition now pay attention to these colors y'all already know about the white the red and the black so this is the white stage so now she's in white because this is the beginning of the ritual so this is how it begins it begins in white that's the purity that's the innocence so she has her innocence this is the innocent girl that that has nothing to do with the industry 
she knows nothing about what she's getting into. So she's wearing the white. This is very important, right? So now the atmosphere of step two is different, right? It's the same room, but now the lights are dark. Now the camera's out and, and the spotlight is on her. So now it's a little different. They're gonna do a little something different uh, today. If you, if you can kind of grasp what's gonna happen, then you already know what's about to happen. They showing you how Hollywood works. So this is step two uh, of the audition. So they tell her, um, you need to take your clothes off. So she like, what? Come again? She didn't really understand what, 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 what she said, what she understood, but she kind of like, hold on, did I hear what I thought I heard? And they said, yeah, take off your clothes. Like, bitch, you heard me. You see what I'm saying? This is how we get down. So, you know, she take off, she take off a little, uh, she take off her top. <laughs> thinking that was all <laughs> thinking the job was done she's like no nah, i said take all your clothes off so she stripped naked you see what i'm saying she stripped naked she take her bra off. you know she she got her she got her tata -ta, her, her tts all out feel me you know you gotta you gotta say certain words you know for the, you know uh, uh youtube purposes but uh yeah so uh now this part is very is very vital right now as she's taking off her clothes she's naked and she's she's kind of like uh she's kind of like holding herself back at this point as you can see she's holding herself back in the beginning and now these flashing lights these flashing lights uh the thing about uh when you see a, a, a lot of flashing lights it makes you very susceptible uh it, it puts you in like almost a hypnotic state uh, that's why a lot of music videos a lot of excuse me a lot of movies show you quick flashing lights and it puts your brain in almost like a hypnotic state uh some people's brains can't handle that that's why some people have epilepsies when they see these quick flashing lights everybody's not everybody can't handle that same type of thing right so these flashing light they take them very quick pictures of her and in the movie is is very quick lights like flashes and as it's doing that, um, you can see someone uh, in in all black in a hood, you know, just like that eyes wide shut. Though that so that this is rep, this is resembling uh, step one of that ritual right there because he's in all black in that hood. They just flash that real quick just to show you, just to let you know if you know then you know type of thing. But that was the only time you seen this figure. Was, in, was when the lights flashed real quick. The lights flashed again and it went back, it went back to her. You see what I'm saying? Now it's it's continuing flashing. Now you can see her kind of like it's it's something's kind of like taking over her. Right? Now she's getting more loose. Now she it almost looks like she's getting possessed right here. You know, her eyes in the back of her head. Not but now she's getting more loose. You see what I'm saying? As it's as it's flashing more and more. Now she getting more loose, you know what I'm saying? She's starting to move like a stripper, you hear me? So, you know what I'm saying? She feeling real sexual, you know, real seductive. You know, now, now she's embodied, you know, what she was here to do. You know what I'm saying? When at first she didn't even want to do it. But you see how quickly, you know, that changed, right? So, and, and then it flashed real quick and it, and it, and it showed uh, like demonic possession. So this is what was going on um, right here in this moment, right? So they flashed again and it flashed back to her, you know, normal. So this was showing you uh, subtly that uh, something else was taking over her as she was as she was doing this, these sexual gestures and these sexual emotions. Uh, it flashed again and it showed you this demonic. This was her, but it showed you her like a, a demonic possession taking over. And I'll explain why uh, in a second. So the lady, uh, Droopy, she's very impressed by this performance, right? So she's like, you got it. Like, you got what it takes. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got it. And uh, the girl, she kind of snaps out of it. She's smiling. And then she her, her smile kind of like fades away. And she looks at, at Droopy. And, and Droopy necklace, uh, she has a pentagram on her necklace right and like i said like i told you 
the pentagram is used in pagan practices for witchcraft and, and, and demon you know demon contact and demonic spirits right so that's what that pentagram is used for now mind you on the first audition she didn't have that necklace on if you noticed the first audition she did not have this on and now the second audition she has it on and the girl noticed it but but she kind of shrugged it off and then smiled you see what i'm saying to like let it go like whatever it might not be nothing but they meant they made sure to show you and they made sure to show you that it was something odd about that necklace even if you didn't know about it or or what that pentagram represented they they subtly told you that something was weird about that because they made the girl's face change when she seen it you see what i'm saying so if you it, it, even you watching with the naked eye it's telling you they're telling they're trying to tell you without telling you that something is weird about this pentagram necklace so as we move on uh she goes back to the apartment it's like a, a day has passed she gets another phone call now she's at the next step right past the audition part now it's something else that has to happen right so she getting dressed now pay attention like i said the white the red and the black so first she wore the way the, the white excuse me she wore the white now she's wearing the red now she's at the next step right so she's wearing the red now now here's her friends these are the people that she lived with these are the aspiring the rest of the aspiring artists actresses actors etc right that she lived with and this fake asshole she like aren't you aren't you a little overdressed for this you know what i'm saying she the girl sarah she told them about her phone call that she received you know what i'm saying she's getting closer and closer into the door she didn't really know the specifics of what she was about to do but she told them like yeah i got this phone call i'm about to go with the, the 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 directors and meet them you know i'm about to meet with them again you see what i'm saying she thinking like it's another audition or something and she like aren't you overdressed you know what i'm saying that's all she did was hate but little did she know see this is the perfect this her right here is the perfect example of the grass is not always greener on the other side so you always looking at these famous people you always looking at these people in hollywood and you like man they got so much of this so much of that and you don't even know what's going on on the other side you don't even know these motherfuckers gotta do some whole rituals sacrifices and whole other shit that you wouldn't even want to deal with you see what i'm saying so her right here she was the whole like example of the grass is not always green on the other side she was putting all her energy into hating on this girl whole time this girl finna get you feel me whole time this girl finna go go through some shit you hear me so moving on uh she she shows up to uh she gets called to the producer's house so now the producer uh calls her to his house right and now he's talking to her so this is the producer of the film right so she didn't she didn't she didn't went past the audition now it's time for the real shit you see what i'm saying and and this is what she doesn't know she still has no clue what's about to take place she she just thinks that the producer wants to talk to her about getting a role in the movie and all she got to do is just say yeah i would like to take the role um so he's talking to her like you know all the stars that have come through here and i can literally make uh, everyone i've made such and such such and such i made this person a star this person and they were prominent people in hollywood so now he's reeling her in you see what i'm saying because this is all she has wanted all along was to become a hollywood star right so oh uh, yeah he's saying all these things like yeah, i can do this i can do that i can do this but uh it's one thing uh that you'll have to do and she's still clueless you know what i'm saying <laughs> she still don't know what the fuck going on she just smiling he he thank you so much you know what i'm saying uh whole time uh and peep the pyramid right here peep the pyramid with what looks like the one eye symbolism in the middle it might be a little ball but you know it's it's symbolic to i mean what does that look like see what i'm saying it's self-explanatory but like i said you know he's still talking to her telling her you know all the sweet little nothings you know old girl in the room again uh a droopy you feel me 
uh, and now you know what I'm saying. He he get closer to her. He said, "Yeah, you know, uh, this don't just this ain't all about just your talent." You feel me? <laughs> what's up with that little thing? You know what I'm saying? He started putting his feet. You know what I'm saying? He tried he, he tried to see what's up. Like bitch, you know you know what you came here for. Like don't act stupid. Like you came here for one reason. You feel me? Like cut the bush. And she actually declines. She gets up. He gets up and she walks out the room like she's not with it just yet right so she gets up she leaves she goes home she cries because this was her big shot and she found out that it comes with a price it comes with a tag right so she goes back to her job she goes back to her job she pleads uh the manager for her job back at the restaurant Cause now she's about to just go back to her her everyday life, right? So um, she talks to the writer that she lives with, right? The independent writer, you know, that's making small time, you know, small time movies. So he's telling her like, yeah, fuck them, like you don't need them. Like at this point, everyone knows that the producer tried to take advantage of her, right? So now he's telling her like, yeah, it'll be all right. Like man, fuck those people, man. Like we can we can do our own thing. Like, I can make you a star in my movie. Like it's like an independent movie right so it's not gonna it's not gonna go like you know what i'm saying it's not gonna be a hit you feel me it's just like independent it's like an independent movie so you know she hearing them but she likes as she's listening to them she like bro fuck this shit like i know what i need to do like i'm not trying to i'm not trying to live i'm not trying to live like this i'm not trying to work like this like i'm not trying to continue working at this restaurant like i know what i need to do now so she picks up the phone and calls the directors again so she calls them now at first they was calling her now she calls them and they tell her well you know where to go <laughs> so and peep the mask keep the mask in the background too same mask that's in you know the eyes wide shut that the mask you know the mask that the people the dude with the all black with the hood on was wearing you know he wasn't wearing that same exact mask but it's just funny that that mask is on the wall you know because that's what they wear at these elite parties they wear these masks um so now she got the heels on she got the pumps you know what i'm saying she dressed to impress now if she didn't already said no now it's time to it's, it's time to go you feel me she know she knows uh the assignment you feel me uh so she took the the train the subway uh and and they decide to show you that it's a full moon outside now this is very important uh, the fact that they they decided to show you that it was a full moon outside so what that means uh in satanic witchcraft uh the power of moon magic so these people um do certain things uh on certain days for certain reasons right uh a, a waning moon comes after the full moon phase where the shadow increases on the surface of the moon and the moon gradually becomes darker on each day of its phase uh during this time spells of binding black magic and destruction are most successful uh this continues until it's called a dark moon when the power of destruction it at its, is at its meta metaphysical peak the moon then increases or is said to be waxing until it is full once more moon magic that is cast on the full moon can help to represent a powerful force so it's the strongest uh at its full moon so they decided to show you this full moon because some shit about to take place this night, right? So now peep, now she's in all black. So we went from white to red to black. So this is when the oath is about to be taken, right? So white, red, black. So, you know, she knows what to do now. She knows what she has to do. So she gets on, the, she gets on her knees, you feel me? So she, you already know what she finna do. You know, and as uh, she's doing that, um, once again, he says that same phrase. He says, uh, the gates are open, Sarah. All you have to do is do this in uh, the portal. Something about a portal and the gate. I'll play what he said, but. The gateway is open, Sarah. All you have to do is be willing to step inside forever and never look back. You can you can hear what he say right so letting her know that the portal is open you see what i'm saying like this 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 portal is open and as 
he puts her hand he puts his hand on her on her head right and he has that same pentagram that that lady was wearing on her neck right so she he he put some type of spirit in her body and that's going to be evident later on right and once again those guys in that black and all black with the hood and in the in the mask they come out again so once again it's telling you they're showing you that this is a ritual taking place right in front of you right now remember that i told you that the dude had the pentagram it, it was he had it branded on his hand right so the next morning she wake up fucked up right she can't she can't it take her a long time to even get out the bed right because he didn't he didn't put the spirit inside of her right this demonic this demonic spirit he didn't put inside of her body right so she wake up real sick she start throwing up she go to work the next day at the restaurant the girl slobbing all on the damn food she like her lips all crusty you know it's not even the beginning you see what i'm saying it's gonna get way worse right so she she back she back at home throwing up um and she opens up the uh they sent her a check the, the astros uh pictures uh they sent her uh a envelope full of money and now first of all uh that symbol um uh, that that production company uses is a half of the uh cult symbol this it's the same occult symbolism that alistair crowley uses right so if y'all know about alistair crowley you know he's the reason behind uh the way they practice this magic it's, it's the same thing that they do right now uh she opens the chest she got a lot of money but she's her body is starting to decay right and the reason behind this is uh these people these at least these people in these occults they believe that uh in order to be reborn uh everything has to die like your old self has to die uh everything you once knew has to come to an end and you have to be reborn into a new person kill your old life sarah bury it in the earth and join us in the sky so this is why that spirit that he put inside her body is causing her body to literally decay and deteriorate so her, her hair is going to start falling out her body is just going to slowly die because they have to come close to death they have to either come close to a near-death experience sometimes they symbolize them having a death where uh some some music videos the artists will have themselves in a casket they'll show it that way uh, some of them will have like a satanic uh, baptism some of them they'll have them in a, in a, a bathtub of blood so that's showing you that they are being reborn and in this sense her body is literally dying and it's, it's and she's going to become reborn this is what these people believe in you have to be reborn as a new person so that's why her body is starting to die right her old body should i say right so she looking crazy looking fucked up and once again as you can see in the back that black, that black hood that man with that hood is the only time you see him in this shot after this he disappears he was never there it's not like oh it's a scary man about to come kill her no he just popped up in this little shot right here and that's it that's the only time you see him so her fingernails start coming off everything bro oh uh, just look at her man she looked like something from the walking dead you see what i'm saying her eyes she's starting to become blind you see what i'm saying uh, the color in her eyes are going away her soul even her soul is just literally just eating away right um her friend you know the hater the hater um she approaches her like damn bitch you look fucked up right and uh she actually kills her right so this is that blood sacrifice that has to be taken right and and it's funny because the first one that had to go um uh, was the the hater right keep the pyramid in the background too as well the pyramid with the one eye symbolism in the middle um so now uh she goes on a killing spree she kills uh everyone in the house she kills all her friends like i said everything has to die from your old life your past life 
So she killed all her past friends. You know, she's becoming this new individual, right? So she literally kills uh, everyone. The writer, she kills all her friends. Everyone that was living in that house is now dead. And now the man with the hood uh, comes back out because the ritual is complete. The sacrifice is, is done. Sacrifice is complete. So he comes out and they take her somewhere. Right, they take her to the woods and now you see these rich powerful people stay with me now i hope i'm not going too fast nah 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 we're in the woods now we're in the woods so now uh these rich powerful people they're walking around in a circle uh here's that producer again uh like i said it's, it's in the middle of the night like i said it's that it's that full moon right so they're doing this on this full moon uh so they actually buried that, that that girl right because her body was dying so they buried her uh, in the ground under this pentagram keep the same pentagram once again but they buried her uh, under this pentagram right this is all ritualistic like i said they have to synchronize death and you becoming and you coming back out of the ground a new person that's why you see a lot of artists they'll say reborn or rebirth or or uh, something something of that nature they'll 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 uh hint to them being reborn that's why a lot of them dyed their hair they dyed their hair a different color you know symbolizing that reborn state um uh, so the next night the next morning she comes out the ground like like a zombie you see what i'm saying but she comes out she comes out her her hair is all gone like i said she's a brand new person so she comes out the ground bald head um and they leave a, a gift behind and it's that same symbol that was you see what i'm saying on that on that thing right uh, and it says happy birthday so she even has a new birthday now because she's a new person it, it, this 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 her coming out the ground represent her birth her rebirth so they tell her happy birthday this is her new birthday you see what i'm saying uh, so she finally she gets back to the house now her 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 best friend the most supportive friend was the last one to go right so she so she sit there keep all the masks again peep the mask so once again now she laying down in the bed now she covered up uh, under the cover so she don't really see what's going on yet um so now she got these starry eyes right she she even has new eyes she even has new eyes so she has been reborn into this person that they have molded her to be this is what the industry does to you. This is why their image always changes. Watch them before they get famous and watch them when they get famous. They have been reborn into this new persona, into what the industry wants them to be. This isn't who they wanted to be. They not being who they want to be. They not wearing the clothes they want to wear. Lil Nas is a perfect example. But for all we know, he might, he might not even be gay. He might he he might can be under mk ultra and that's just his mk ultra personality you see what i'm saying but he wasn't doing that before he was famous look at before he was famous look at him now he has been reborn into this fixed persona that they have manufactured for him they don't just get famous and say oh you know what i got a better taste now i got better taste since i got more money i got i want to wear this now no this is what they're being manufactured into being right and that's what was that's that's what's resembled uh with her new eyes that she have she has a new pair of eyes starry eyes right so that last girl her best friend she kissed she kind of like kiss her but when she kissed her it was like the kiss of death you see what i'm saying because she died after she kissed her like blood was coming out her mouth it, uh, it was weird right now she's dead right the last person that had her back right that last person that was involved in her past life had to go so now she has been reborn she is completely you know into she's been completely molded into this new person now because everything in her past life is now gone that job her friends you feel me even her body her old vessel is gone see what i'm saying this is what this symbolizes. look how Look how quote unquote perfect she looks. Look how damn, look how her damn head look like a perfect mold. You see what I'm saying? Look like a damn gumball machine. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Straight out the gumball machine. 
Like she like one of them Lindell chocolate. You ever had one of them white chocolate Lindell? You feel me? Where you unravel the, the plastic? Bro, that's that's what she looked like right now. Like a perfectly sculptured, you know what I'm saying? White chocolate truffle. You feel me? So yeah, like she's this brand new person. Now they gave her this wig. They gave her this wig to wear. You know, this perfect little wig. Now she's this perfect person. Peep the all black that she's wearing now. She went from white to red to now she's wearing the black. So the, the ritual has been completed. She is now, you know, this new person. Right, and last but not least, the finishing touch. She puts on the same pentagram, and now she's one of them. Now she has become one of them. Now that now she's practicing the same witchcraft, the same black magic that they're doing. Right now, she has become their puppet. And this is the story of Hollywood. Right, and this is how it ends. Right, with those starry eyes. So that was that movie right there uh i hope you enjoyed the breakdown uh if you notice some things that i didn't or, or you have anything to to input you know what i'm saying be be uh you are very welcome to do so um so yeah let me know what y'all think about that man like that that's hollywood that's hollywood for you that's they showed you exactly how it go so don't be surprised see what i'm saying but that's it for this video, man. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Appreciate y'all for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing like y'all been doing. Y'all been going crazy. I appreciate y'all so much for all the support. I'm out.